All right, uh, the last one, uh, we have one more presentation and that's Samita and uh, she's been working, cooking up something interesting um, for a while now. Uh, we've been waiting for this to be merged. Um, so this is the flight air for provider. Samita, take it on. Yeah, thank you. Um, let me share my screen first. All right. Hey everyone, my name is Samhita. I'm here today to talk about the flight airflow provider. So um, airflow's typical use case is to construct ETL pipelines. In the case of machine learning pipelines, we kind of need more powers to facilitate building and deploying the machine learning models, uh, which airflow doesn't provide or isn't uh, you know, efficient enough, but flight is, and it also has all the required features. Uh, because flight uh, helps run resource intensive tasks. It helps construct dynamic tags, uh, manage custom dependencies, and also run distributed training jobs. And you know, there are more features. Uh, so uh, the flight airflow provider, with the flight airflow provider, one could uh, construct ETL pipelines in airflow and then machine learning pipelines in flight and thereby trigger the machine learning pipelines or in general flight pipelines from within Airflow. So this that's the typical use case of this provider. And uh, we think this is going to be helpful to the Airflow users who wanna leverage the best of both worlds, Airflow and flight. If you want a deeper dive into the differences between Airflow and flight, I recommend you to read this blog post wherein the author talked about airflow and flight in detail, compared the two and also has included some example use cases to, uh, you know, to prove the differences. And now let me just uh, give a brief overview of the uh, provider, the design of the provider. So this is the repository where the provider is hosted. And uh, this is how you'll have to install the provider. It's just pip install airflow provider flight. And these are all the configuration parameters that you can use to initiate a connection from Airflow to flight. So host is the required argument and the others are optional. There's also extra wherein you can pass a JSON dictionary with all of these keys, these are the accepted keys. And yeah, these are the two modules that are available in this provider. One is flight operator, which is the one that you'll have to use to trigger a flight execution be it a task execution or a workflow execution. So in here, you'll have to give the flight connection ID, which is the ID that pertains to the configuration parameters you give here. And you will also have to give the launch plan name or the task name. This is how you can import flight operator into your tag. And then there's flight sensor. So if at all you need to wait for an execution to complete, you can use flight sensor. And this is how you can import sensor into your DAG. Now let's just look at a couple of uh, examples to understand the code syntax better. So here I have initialized an Airflow DAG. Uh, within the Airflow DAG, I have an, again initialized flight operator, which is an Airflow task. And in there, I have sent, I'm uh, sending task ID, which is a unique identifier to the task. And then there's flight connection ID, project, domain, launch plan name, service account, and so on. So when I run this tag, what happens is uh, Airflow triggers a flight execution at the flight end. It triggers a flight execution. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It just triggers a flight execution and then it succeeds. But what if you want to wait for an execution to come? Sorry, can you hear me? We're losing you a little bit, Samita. Oh, I think my internet connection is clicky. It, yeah. It's okay now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in here, uh, this is an example where in, uh, if at all you wanna wait for an execution to complete, then you can initialize flight sensor. So uh, in flight sensor, you can send task ID, the execution name, the execution you wanna wait on, and then there's project domain. And flight sensor by default pulls the execution uh, every 60 seconds. So that's the default uh, number, that's the default number. And uh, there's also um, 
like what what if you want to say run on uh, run an execution after the sensor you want to say that you you, you want to define that order uh, can you hear me i'm sorry we can we can okay sure. okay. okay okay all right uh, so if at all you want to define the order of the execution, then you can use this operator and this is how you can define the dependency between the tasks. And what if you want to wait for an execution, a long running execution, say the execution is going to take a day or more than a day. In such a case, you can set the mode to reschedule. So uh, the default mode is spoke. Uh, but if at all you want to wait for a long running execution, make sure to set the mode to reschedule. Also increase the poke interval. So here I have increased poke interval to five minutes. So this checks the execution every five minutes, and I have also set timeout and software. These are the additional parameters that you can give. And yeah, these are the examples. And this is the example that I'm going to run now. This example basically imports NYC taxi data from S3 and then uploads it to Create DB, which is a distributed SQL data. To again, Please the uh, S3 data, which fetch the S3 data, and then, uh, uh, yeah, and then they upload or insert the data into Create DB. Uh, here, I have initialized the DAG again, and then I'm calling all the aforementioned functions. And finally, I have initialized a flight operator to call the flight execution after the data is inserted into Create DB. So, here I am. Uh, calling this particular workflow and i'm also sending an input and i'm uh, i'm asking airflow to execute this flight uh, operator only after inserting the data into create db and this is the flight workflow in here i have defined a sql alchemy task to fetch the data from create db and then uh, train a machine learning model and then finally generate the predictions so that's that's the typical flow Flow code, which I'm using in conjunction with the Airflow code. So here I have uh, I have included all of these libraries, namely Scikit-learn, Flight Provider, and Postgres Provider. And this is the uh, repository. This is the you know the directory structure that I've used. Uh, ignore all the other directories. So they, they pertain to the provider. Just consider demo demo for now. In here, I have included all my DAGs under the DAG folder, DAX folder, and then there's Requirements.txt, which has all the requirements. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And before I run the code, I just want to go through all the commands that I've run to set the airflow environment up. Firstly, I have downloaded the Astro CLI, and then I created a new project directory and run Astro Dev in it to initialize a new Astro project. And then I've written my DAGs, updated requirements.txt, and then run Astro Dev start to build the containers and run I see after I uh, I've run those commands. So this is the final UI. And NYC taxi is the workflow that I want to trigger now. Let me just trigger that. All right, so it's triggered. Meanwhile, let me just go through the connections uh, I have set. So this connection basically connects uh, to flight from airflow to flight. So that's the connection I've set up. Uh, here the connection type is flight. I've set the connection type to flight and I've set host, login, password, and extra. So the in extra, I've set auth mode to client credentials. For uh, people who are new to Airflow, the password is uh, available, but it isn't visible on the UI. So yeah, and I have also created a connection from Airflow to create DB. In here, I've set the connection type to Postgres. I've set the host. Uh, I'm using create DB cloud. So this is the host. And then uh, this is the login. I have, I also have a password and I've set SSL mode to require. Now, let me just go to DAGs. Yeah. So the execution's done. It, uh, sorry. Yeah, so it runs successfully 
And now let me just go to the flight console to see if that, well, if that ran. Your network is really struggling, I think. <laughs> I don't know, but it's kind of unstable now. Yeah, so this execution got triggered and it ran successfully. <laughs> Are you still there? Now, let me just trigger the sensor example. Sunita, you might want to turn off your camera. <clears throat> okay. I think you can still share your screen without the camera on. It might save a little bit. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so let me just trigger the sensor example now. So the task got triggered. Let me go to the flight console again. Yeah, so it's in the running state. And let me just terminate this task, uh, this execution to see if that event is propagated back to Airflow. So I'll just terminate it. And let me go back to this. Now this is gonna take about a minute or so because uh, the polling happens every 60 seconds. I have also wanted to mention that if at all you terminate the execution at the airflow end, after the execution is triggered uh, and before the task succeeds, then that event would be propagated to flight and that error would pop up. So. Let me just refresh it. All right, so I'll show you the error message. So this is how the error message looks like if at all you terminate the execution at the airflow end. And let me just go back to the airflow view. So yeah, this failed because I aborted it at the flight end. Let me just go to the log. And yeah, you can see the error message. The execution got aborted. Yeah, that's about it. I guess, yeah, that's about it. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can shoot them now or you can post your questions later on Slack. Thank you. It's fantastic. I think uh, probably Samita did not even explain that so if you have legacy pipelines or any pipelines your entire data team is still using Airflow, you can start using Flight with this today. Uh, you can. You can basically go piecemeal, right? use whatever you want from flight. And the cool part is you can use flight as a task orchestrator alone completely. So uh, you don't have to run workflows. You can just write tasks, you can run it for Spark and now with Ray and Dask and all these things that are coming in flight with a singular interface, one operator to get all of this to go. So hopefully this is useful and helpful to many other people. Uh, I know Lyft uses this operator for all our uh, for all their legacy uh, pipelines. All right. Okay. If there are no more questions, I think we are at time. And this hopefully this was a helpful meeting. It was uh, really cool to see all the work that's happening. And thank you, folks, for joining in.